Okay, so to mitigate matrix effects when standardizing or calibrating an instrument, which again is all the other junk that's in your sample that's not your analyte that might perturb the response of your, um, your instrument to the analyte, uh, one way to get over that, and one of the more robust ways to do that, is through this process called standard addition. And, and the name hopefully implies to you that we're, we're actually going to add the standards themselves directly to the sample. Um, and so the whole point of this is to minimize the effects of, of, of the, the matrix difference between your standard and your sample by just adding them together. So we no longer have separate solutions, which external standardization was. Uh, now we're combining them into a single um, solution. So uh, there's a couple different ways to do this practically. So the first way is to just add increasing amounts of the standard to the same sample. So we start with this sample, which I have drawn up here uh, in a cartoon here. So that squiggly blue line is the, the starting volume of the sample. So what we're going to do is take a really concentrated version of our standard. In this case, uh, if we're looking at, say, lead in drinking water, uh, we're going to take a highly concentrated version of a lead solution and we're going to spike it. We're going to add it directly into the sample. Uh, and we're going to do this in a way where we try to add the minimum amount or volume of the standard to our sample so we don't change the volume uh, by anything that's uh, consequential. So what that looks like in cartoon format is we have our really highly concentrated stock solution of lead, that's that green little dropper bottle, and we're going to pipette a tiny, tiny minimum volume into, our, into the same sample. And so now what we have is the original sample, which had some amount of lead, plus now we've added some amount of lead to that. And so it, this is literally the same sample. We haven't changed. Uh, we just now have a little bit more of the analyte that's been added to the solution. So we're going to take that sample and we're going to also run that on our instrument. So now we have uh, a response from our original sample and we have a response from our sample plus a little bit more lead that we added and we know how much we added. So we'll repeat that a couple more times with the same sample. So we're just adding a little bit more of that concentrated lead uh, to the same sample and then we measure the response so we get a response for that knowing how much lead we added. We'll do that for, for a, a few of these standards. Uh, and so what we'll get in the end is a calibration curve that looks something like this. So oops, let's not do that. Let's do that in black here. So we'll end up with the same exact type of curve, but it's going to look a little bit different. So we'll have our uh, response, uh, whatever that is, if we're measuring absorbance on the atomic absorption spectrometer, something like that. So it could be absorbance. Um, and then we have the concentration in this case of the lead 2 plus on our concentration x axis. So imagine what we just did, right? We measured our sample, and maybe uh, in that sample, right, it has some amount of our analyte in it, presumably, because that's why we're measuring it. Uh, but we just don't know how much. So when we measure that first sample, our response is probably going to be non-zero, right? Because it, there's some finite amount of the lead in that solution. So our response is not at the zero point on the y-axis. It's non-zero. Uh, and then as we add known amounts, of the lead to each one of these, in, to the sample iteratively, the first standard is going to be whatever we had to begin with, right? That's our baseline because it's already there, plus whatever we spiked into it from that green little stock bottle. So we've got some additional amount of lead, and we keep adding more and more of that lead for our three standards. Okay, so it looks just like uh, our external standard calibration curve, except this offset that we have from our x-axis, right? The intercept does not go through zero like it did before. But we can still draw in Excel or any graphing program, we can draw a straight line. But this time we're going to allow the line to extrapolate uh, through zero on the x-axis over here. We will again uh, ask Excel to tell us what the equation of this nice straight line is. We'll get y equals mx plus b. We'll ask for the r squared value just to confirm the linearity of our plot. But instead of uh, simply solving for x in this case, we are going to look for 
the x-intercept. So that's when y is equal to 0. So we'll actually set y equal to 0 and solve for x. That will give us this point, which will give us the intrinsic lead concentration in our original sample. So it's sort of this backdoor trick here, which allowed us to get to the lead concentration. Uh, and remember, the whole purpose in doing it this way was to alleviate any effects of the matrix. And we did that by actually making our standard our sample, right? The matrix itself here was still the sample the entire time. So there's no difference between standard and sample. Um, this is, this is the first way to do standard addition. And in this way, um, we're adding tiny amounts of our stock solution to the same sample. Right? The, the benefit of this is if you have a really small amount of sample to begin with, because you aren't, you aren't destroying any of your sample. You are using all of it every single time. Uh, the problem is we did all of that. Right, We actually ran four different solutions to determine one sample concentration. So if you had 10 samples, 10 different samples, you would have to run 40 different samples on your instrument because you have to do this for every single sample. You have to slowly and iteratively spike each sample. So it's time consuming and it's resource intensive and sometimes it's not practical to do. Um, but if you can, it will always result in minimizing any matrix effects and provide you the most accurate representation uh, or quantification of your data. Okay, so the second way to do this is if you have plenty of sample to deal with uh, and you're not worried about using it up, then instead of adding the uh, stock concentrate to, to one sample iteratively, you can actually partition your original sample and just make several different solutions uh, with some added analyte to it. So it's still standard addition, but uh, instead of doing that iteratively on the same sample, you're partitioning your sample. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so you start with your water sample or whatever the sample is here. It's, you got that big jug of it, you got plenty of it, you don't worry about. It. You grab uh, a series of flasks depending on how many standards you want to make. You need to make at least three standards and then have one of your standards where there's no additional analyte being added. So that's your original sample. So we're going to call that uh, zero here, which is just the original sample. We'll call this one because we're adding maybe one ppm addition. We'll say that this next one is uh, two ppm and then we'll say this last one is five ppm. You could add more here. There's reasons why you would or wouldn't. Um, and then you're going to just add a known volume of your sample to each one of these flasks to start with. So you're all starting with exactly the same sample in them. Okay, so to each one of those flasks, then you're going to add the corresponding amount of the stock analyte solution, your standard, uh, to each one of those samples to give you whatever the final concentration is you desire. So in this case, for the first solution, that's our zero. That's just our pure sample, so we're not going to add anything to it. Uh, so that's what we see here. To our next solution, we want to add enough lead to give us one part per million. So we're going to spike in enough lead, that's the green here, so that the overall solution, when we bring it to volume in the flask, is whatever the original sample lead was, plus one part per million. Do the same thing for addition of two parts per million, and then five parts per million. And then our last step here is to bring all of those volumetric flasks up to the same volume with water. And that's what that light blue color is there. And so all solutions will have the same volume. You will now have known amounts of added standard plus or in addition to whatever the analyte concentration was in the intrinsic sample, which is included the same volume in all of these. So this is exactly the same uh, end result that we got in the first version of standard edition, except here we're generating four entirely separate solutions with, with our sample and standard in them, rather than iteratively adding small amounts of a stock standard. Uh, and again, the, the, the reason why you do one or the other is just simply based on how much of the, the sample you have. If you have excess sample, this is actually a, a little bit easier to do in practice. So what do we do? Well, we take each of these, uh, these standard slash samples, and we run them on whatever our 
piece of equipment is or method to get some response, right? That's the whole goal here is we'll get some sort of response uh, for these four uh, samples. So uh, just as we did before then, we'll have response as a function of the concentration that we added. And so we'll have our response on the y, uh, that's our dependent variable, uh, and concentration. Uh, this is our variable that we're changing here uh, of lead that we're adding, just as we did in the previous case of standard addition for our first uh, sample, the zero here, it has zero concentration, but there's going to be some non-zero response likely because that's what's in the sample itself. And then we'll continue to have whatever the baseline level of our uh, samples, because they all have the same, plus one part, two part, and five parts per million for our, um, our three different standards here. So we'll end up with a curve that's nominally the same as what we had in our first example. So we will uh, draw a line or extract a trend line through uh, the x-axis here. We again will uh, compute a, uh, an equation of this line. Um, and we will solve for the x-intercept here, which will tell us what our concentration x is in our original sample. Okay, so those are the two methodologies for computing this. You'll have some examples of this to, to process yourself.